You might as well face it. You're addicted to doom. A new project has been launched to address rising climate anxiety among students at the University of East Anglia. Students in Norwich told BBC News they felt hopelessness, anger and despair about climate change. And a new survey published this week found that 45 percent of UK students worry about climate change once a week or more. One particular student said that she'd experienced depression after being overwhelmed by the scale of the problems facing the planet. And wait for it, she developed disordered eating when trying to cut out food packaged with plastic. Some youngsters are seeking therapy and are even afraid to have kids. Well, I had kittens when I read this. There's an entire generation of terrified teenagers and tortured 20 somethings who think Kent will be underwater tomorrow afternoon. Let's hope that doesn't happen. That would ruin my trips to Whitstable. What a place. Have you ever tried their oysters? Best in the world. The more I look at the human race, the more I think we are unevolving. Homo sapiens, the Latin term to describe this species, have prevailed in the animal kingdom. We've won, folks. We control everything. We've constructed ships that penetrate the high seas. We've built entire cities in the desert. We found cures for disease. We've clothed, fed and educated ourselves. We've crafted weapons, sent a man to the moon. And I can send a photo to my auntie Patsy in California that will arrive on her smartphone in less than a second. And we've become a hardy bunch too, withstanding natural disaster, disease and war. Now, war is an unfortunate but immutable characteristic of humanity. It turns out we fight each other and we always will. And look, here's the thing. If you remember the First and Second World Wars, our British and allied heroes were so heroic. Trench battles and brave soldiers running into no man's land to face almost certain death against an unforgiving and unstoppable German war machine. 17-year-old boys took to the skies in Spitfire aeroplanes with no certainty that they would come back. At times, the statistics suggested they wouldn't. Seven decades on, and our current generation of youngsters lie awake at night worrying about problems that don't even exist yet. That's when they're not worrying about pronouns or which comedian or top author to cancel next. Now, I am personally concerned about rising temperatures. I'm no climate change denier. And I think we have a great opportunity, including economically, to go green. But we can't do it on our own. And this climate hysteria is scientifically debatable and deeply counterproductive. Young people have been brainwashed at school and at university and via mainstream media to think that Armageddon is around the corner. But does this not have a familiar ring to you? What about the deadly pandemic that was going to kill everyone, but which turned out to be very nasty, yes, and dangerous for a small few, but which was mild or non-existent for most? I fully understand why older and more vulnerable people still wish to take protections, distancing, wearing a face covering. It's my view that the data doesn't back it up, but hey, it's a free country. But when I watch children and young people wandering around in masks outside at the tail end of a pandemic and with Omicron, the latest variant being milder than the gags in an episode of Last of the Summer Wine, my heart sinks. Why the hell have so many young people been terrified of Covid? Because they, like the rest of us, have been subjected to two years of propaganda. The propagation of fear has been government policy, all craftily executed by those terrifying ideological fanatics at the so-called behavioural nudge groups, like Communist Party member and Covid zealot Dr Susan Mitchie. There she is, the Mitch is back. Covid posed almost no risk statistically to young people, but the template of fear was established. There are stories of toddlers and young children in the US screaming and bursting into tears when relatives or school teachers now remove a face mask. Well done, everyone. And this template of fear and culture of catastrophizing has been transferred to the climate. Sure, let's recycle. Let's not waste energy. It's expensive enough as it is. 
And who doesn't want cleaner air? And let's decarbonise as long as it's in the national interest and doesn't unduly impact the economy. But I'll be honest with you, folks, if America, China, India, Brazil and others don't change their ways, then our efforts will be a complete waste of time. We'll be done for anyway. Now, I don't think that will happen. The instinct for self-preservation is deeply embedded in the human psyche. If the threat of global warming grows, all nations will be united around a common enemy. And I've got no doubt that we will innovate and deploy our colossal resources to handle the situation. But whatever happens, it's time to end the fear mongering. Whether it's climate change, COVID or even nuclear war with this monster, Vladimir Putin. We've got to just say no to being terrified. This man wants us to be afraid, too. But you know as well as I do that the only thing we must fear most is fear itself. And if young people who are the future of our society, who are the future of humanity, spend their lives terrified about the future, then we're all doomed. I've got some breaking news for you. Life is dangerous. It always has been and it always will. Given the fact that we used to kill each other with spears and given that back in the day, a fever, a toothache or an infected finger could be a death sentence. We've actually never been safer. We've never had it so good. And the nuclear deterrent means that there's still no logical strategic advantage in one country nuking another. It's all saber rattling from Mr. Putin, who seeks to scare the bejesus out of us. Something Hitler tried to do, but the fearless Winston Churchill wasn't having any of it. And the rest is history. I'm afraid we're all going to go one day. So whilst we're here, let's live a little, shall we? Let's have some fun. Let's be courageous. Let's be bold. And let's understand that peril, risk and danger are not something to be afraid of. They are the very essence of life itself. That life is hard, unpredictable and suffused with risk is what makes it worth living. Cowering in front of your TV screen, being fed propaganda and waiting for the apocalypse isn't living at all and will likely hasten our departure. We'll all probably die of anxiety. It's time to reject state sponsored fear mongering. We've seen it with Covid and climate is next. And it's time for this snowflake generation to man up, to woman up and grow a pair of balls. Do you want to be a passenger in life? Or do you want to be in the driving seat? Life is difficult and it always has been. And that's why it's so great.